And it's Wednesday, Stuart. And I know what that means, but you're going to tell me anyway. Trekkers Mission Briefing. Trek Yards Mission Briefing, what? everybody. Say that slower. Trek, go. Trek Yards, Yards Mission, Mission, Mission briefing. briefing. Embrace the day and looking at ships. This week, a cannon ship. This week, a cannon model to find all those cool details and nice high resolution that we can zoom in and say, oh my goodness, there's that Easter egg that, you know, the TARDIS is there or... I don't know, something else that's really... The flux capacitor is on this ship, maybe. You'll find out in this episode in this week. Strip, what are we doing today? And I've got the miniature waiting for your words. So what are we doing? So, and then I can fly it. What are we doing? It's right there. We are talking about the Intrepid class. Oh, no. We're just talking about the Intrepid. The half-saucer design ship that we see in Enterprise. Yes. yes, there we go. One of the one of the fleet, the Earth ships. Ooh, very yeah. nice. So, Stuart, yeah, this appeared in a couple of episodes. It saved the Enterprise at one point. It's clearly reminiscent. And, yeah, it's the other Intrepid class. But in the files, it's called the Half Saucer. And it is clearly a Half Saucer. So, Stuart, do you remember seeing it for the first time? And your impressions on seeing yes. those other NX, well, NX era ships? Because there wasn't that many. And then suddenly there was. <laughs> yeah, uh, it was an interesting design. Um, I wasn't sure exactly... Um, why we didn't see more of it. It would have been cool to see these ships out and about yep. doing stuff. I know that they didn't have the Warp 5 engines. So they wouldn't be quite as far mm -hmm. out. But yeah. if they could be, it would just take them longer. You know, mm. It would have been nice to see more of the fleet mm -hmm. um, in some capacity. <laughs> um, but this one was a unique design, kind of odd. Some odd mm. choices, in my opinion. <laughs> but we will be talking about that. So I remember seeing it and going... Okay, that's interesting. It's it looks like it's really thrown together last minute, but what are you gonna do? It it it's a nice it's a nice example, I think. Fair to say of a CG kit bash. I, yeah. I think that's that's fair to say. Um I like I mean we've done a really amazing episode where we looked at the chronological ships of the NX era to the, the NX01. Yeah. And there's actually a lot of those ships. And this is one that I know we discussed at, at the time because I feel like there's quite an obvious sort of link and, 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 and order to them. And I like thinking of this one as the the one in between the saucer that the before the NX. You know, the NX01 is the full saucer. They were going towards the saucer design as being what made sense, but it was obviously expensive to make, took a lot of time. And so this was the first iteration, the one before that, where they, you know, let's make a set primary hull. The shape makes sense. You put the shell bays right at the back and we'll see that in a minute. And then everything else is sort of mm. that era's tech before it then evolves into the half saucer, which is why I like how different the nacelles are. How big, how bulky. I mean, they're big and they are bulky yeah. and they've got these big metal pipes and things. It's really, they feel more rustic. And obviously the, the NX1 was designed at this point, so they were to go back a step. Um, but I like it as a, as a conceptual sort of, it's a CG kit bash, but with its own flair, I think. It's safe to say, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, and there are enough differences between it and the NX01, which... Yeah. We're gonna kind of take a look at. Yeah, like you said you already pointed a bunch of them out on the nacelles. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, and, and for me, first reaction was, I liked it, and I do, like I said, I do wish it was, it was seen more. But I always felt for the NX01 timeline that, unlike DS9, when they threw Mirandas and blew them up, as it was no one's business, <laughs> I would imagine there's less than like 20 ships in Starfleet, yeah. and because obviously each ship takes on to make, and they would, they would so quickly go to the next design. That there's probably might like, there could only be like three of these. Like, that's it, and they obviously need home defense, and there's multiple planets we're invested in. So yeah, you could go explore, but you also need to defend. Maybe or you know we know there are Iron pirates, so we know there is just people that attack things. So that's why the NX was such a standout because it was the first explorative dedicated. So I can imagine this is one. You know, this is probably the best of the home defense units. This is what I was picturing when I sort of see the ship. Which is what we see in, in the show. It they come out of the woodwork and they attack. Duras is a uh, bird of prey, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But Stuart, scale, bit yes. of a bit of an obvious one. This, um, but same pieces. What is it? Well, there we go. So we've looked at this before, and I remember that uh, even though that saucer looks very similar to the NX, it's not the same size. Uh, so this one's a little bit of a smaller ship, and it's got a little bit of a interesting. Well, it's smaller, but it's got some elements that kind of stand out but let's just take a look at the size top view there you yes go. so here we go um well i guess the saucer is the same size as the nx ish um but obviously chopped up the there wouldn't be nearly as many people on board this ship as the nx and the nx had like 80 i believe 
Uh, so this is like 20, 30 people probably, and not for long range, not, not for long range missions. This is sticking close to home. But one of the biggest things that stands out to me in this is the nacelles and how huge they are. We know that we know that the NX has the Type Five or the the Warp Five engines. Um, so newer tech, shrunk down, and uh, I'm not sure the speed of this Intrepid. Probably like Warp. Three. Well, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because the Franklin, take it or leave it, is meant to be the one that's before this. You know, that's the first Warp Four. And those engines are a lot smaller. It's actually even smaller than half saucer. But this saucer is so much more of the fleet than the Franken. The Franken, could, we could argue, was the test ships. So they didn't use the 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 ship of the fleet saucer. I guess why would you need to do that? Um, but this could be the first 4.5 ship because we know that the, just the increments took a while to get. You know, and and the distance between warp four and five was only like a couple of years. Or three to five, sorry, it's only like six years. The Franklin must be in between. So it could be like the increment, or this could be the first Warp 3 ship. And they, this is this is the ship that they're thinking we're going to explore, but just to our outer colonies, maybe. Which would, which would probably make more sense, with the engines being so big, because, I mean, they are drastically bigger. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'd be thinking this is... I think the Franklin would be more advanced than this, if Assuming that it's in the same timeline, of course. Um, yeah. So I would say, yeah, this would be like a Warp 3 design. Like the, like uh, the flagship Warp, warp 3. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and it could be, too, like you pointed out the inner grills and how they have, like, the piping. Um, it could be that that's just older tech, uh, you know, because those are chiller grills. They're meant to, like, dissipate heat and stuff is what they're called. So maybe they have to pump them through these. Or these are refitted engines. Uh, this used to be a Warp 3 ship because the Franklin came out. They upgraded these to Warp 4, so they yep. had to add components to them or something. I don't That's know. interesting. More more plasma feeds, whatever. That's really interesting. I mean, I can almost see, and we'll get to this in a minute, but I'll, you know, the fact that the nacelles are right on the saucer. Perhaps the, the, the top chunk, like they added a middle bit, and that was the extra coils to get them Warp 4, and the only way they can make that work with the Warp Field is to bring it right up to the saucer, which is not how it's designed, but because, yeah, you're right, they are a little bit more higgledy-piggledy with the amount of stuff on the outside. So I could totally buy that. Um, but actually, in terms of, like, elegance, I think this ship actually has a really nice feel to it. Like, it does feel sort of fast, sort of maneuverable. And its small size, I think, works with advantage. And honestly, it's the fins. The fins do a lot for it. If you look at the fins, which is weird, but, yeah, the fins work on this one. The go-faster fins. Yeah, and you got to wonder what those are for, because it's not meant for ap atmospheric flight, obviously. Um, it looks cool, I guess, but does it help dissipate the? Are there more surface area to cool things off? Is it you know to help with the warp bubble in some fan ma manner? Are there like warp stabilizers built into the tips of the wings that we don't see? I don't know. Yeah, no. Uh, so he still sort of needs a deflector unit down here, doesn't it? So cool that you had one. Um, and obviously, you talk about the uh, the scale, how little space. I mean, if you're trying to picture where all the things are, you can't have the engineering room, which is behind the bridge, uh, you know, decent far way back uh, in the X, but it, it would need to be in the back bit. I mean, there really isn't any excess room. And you can see the window scale. I mean, those are the rooms. And then you've got a single ring of corridor, and then some more rooms, and then basically out of, out of ship. Um, but as, as we know, though, uh, that sort of size doesn't always determine. So the next view is actually the side view, and it looks about the same, but maybe it's got a little more bulk I, in the uh, yeah. in the in the bottom and the, the back like portion it. there than the NX. Yeah, um, looks like, like they could make up a little bit of that missing room there. Yeah, different uh, windows as well. No, same windows. It's tricky because it, it is a tweaked model. Um, it's not. Identical. I did quite like the fact that the pontoons are different, or the 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 it, the, the front lip thing is is different. Um, yeah. Oh man, those engines are yeah. just just ginormous, aren't they? They are. It's just odd placement for the engines. I've always thought that, and even Doug mentioned it once too. He goes, "Why would you put a bridge between two nacelles and just well, I mean, bridge crew?" Jump back to the first <laughs> picture. We can see that obviously. I mean, is that? 
Uh, as a starship connoisseur, Stuart, <laughs> is that the niggle that you're like, oh, why? Or can you see a functional yeah. design or... Well, when you mentioned that they had to do that to create a stable warp bubble with an older style than the cell, it makes sense. You know, keep everything tight in a nice little package yeah. instead of extending everything out. Yeah. And I think that's where the warp stabilizer crystal comes in in the NX. Mm. This doesn't have one that's visible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it could be that because they didn't have that technology yet or whatever, that, yeah, to create a bubble around this, they mm. need to have them pulled in tight. Um I don't know, that's just a, a guess, but it makes sense. And in all fairness, there is no actual grills. <laughs> There's a small level of space, but there is no grills at the point of the bridge. So the bridge is safe, but if you stick your hand out the back of it, you might feel a bit of electric electric thrill. Um, but I mean, I would assume that... Imagine, imagine having the quarters underneath the windows, underneath the facade, just always this red rotating... Vroom, 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 just like... That's Honestly. that's that's where they have the disc. Oh. That's where they have the disco dance clubs. There's one on each side of the ship. Well, they're in Discovery, so why not? They, exactly. They save they save on lighting that way. They just use the bizarre lighting, and it's fine. They use the bizarre lighting as bizarre lighting. Ah. So picture four uh, from the back. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This is an interesting view. I love the back. I I love that weird set of shapes and it feels functional and actually the way that I've, I've obviously never looked that close at it because we said it for these episodes but there's clearly what looks like an engineering room back there the circle space with the different levels like that looks like an engineering space to me like a dedicated this is now the room here it is mm -hmm. yeah it does have a cool look I mean if you push these if you pull those nacelles back um, it's got a very I think it's the Acula class uh, from FASA with the half saucer look. Mm. Uh, it's got that kind of design elements. Mm. And then this, this angle really shows that off. It's a nice, that spine leading back the way it does and kind yeah. of contouring in. It looks really nice and almost Stingray-like. It looks mm. like a marine creature kind of thing. Um, and interestingly enough, the, the end caps on the nacelles being turned sideways is an odd choice, but it, I think it works in this case. Um, yeah. So they hadn't quite found the perfect orientation of their end caps. <laughs> yeah. They were still working yeah. on it, guys. <laughs> Maybe uh, the end caps need line of sight, which is kind of what it looks like. Yes. <laughs> that. It's interesting to there are. It's interesting to there are actually impulse drives at the back. I was wondering if they would still include them, but there are actually little ones right on the rim of the saucer. Mm -hmm. Which I never noticed before, and that's, that's different to the NX. Um, I always like the, the changes they had to make. They did obviously rip the model apart, use the basics, and rebuild over it. But it is, it's not a kit bash per se. If you look at the NX, they've only used about, what, a fifth of the NX? Everything else is scratch built. Mm. So it is mm. very much its own ship. Which is why I love how it fits into the evolution of the, of the, of the lineage so well. Um, but the bottom view, next picture, obviously it's most similar view. Um. Yeah. Yeah, there's not a lot going on down here. It looks very Enterprise-esque in this one. Although those fins on the off the nacelles interest me. I want to know the purpose. There has to be a purpose for those fins. Just to give it more dimensionality, I think. But yeah, it's the missing link of the design. Yeah, it's it's just an odd design choice. It really is. If if it was an atmospheric ship, I'd understand a hundred percent. But. Maybe it's a reference to the Phoenix, giving it a sense of ship. Because they were still going off that lineage, and we're not a million years away from those designs. So if people are trying to link mm. to, to that, maybe. Yeah. yeah, I have no idea, man. Yeah. It just... looks very much like airplane, yeah. you know. <laughs> it works, though. Yeah. Yeah. Or maybe John decided, hey, I'll add some fins. I like fins. Look at the bee. Yeah, we need to ask. The, yeah, we need to find out. Is it just me, or, or if you look at the after the torpedo launchers, there's extra armor plates on the saucer, sticking out armor. That's not on the NX, is it? Surely? Raised armor levels? Uh, that's a good question. It does look a little different. Yeah. Does it give some dimensionality, or... Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think you're right. I think those are. Yeah. 
which is cool. I mean, again, the NX01 is more advanced, so they've slimmed down the technology. The hull hmm. plating, the polarized hull plating is, yep. you know, integrated into the main hull instead of being added as a layered element. I mean, mm. that's fine. Mm, I like that. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Cool. Um, next shot is a really cool shot of the back of the saucer. I love this. I love this. There's, like, cargo bay doors there, garage doors to drive in the car, you know. And little airlocks, one on each side. Yeah. Uh, and it gives you a sense of scale. It's not a huge ship at all, by any means. No. And it's such a natural devolution of where the X put them. But it makes sense. Yeah. If this is an Explorer, but in, in the small sense, or if this is a ship that, you know, that, remember, no transporters as being people. So you've got to launch shuttles. You've got to launch things. So you need these bays. And if this is one of the primary fleet ships, then yeah. This is not a, a merry ship to cruise around in. You need to have the crew, the shuttles, the warp drive, the weapons, and then now you're getting A to B and you're moving people. So actually, if you break it down to that, then really, probably a lot of the saucer is shuttle storage, is shuttle bays, and that might be its one well, its primary functions. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the next view is a di so different view to show off the differences. Because from this view, it looks very un NX, I think. Has its own super sort of sleek mm. vibe. Um, I just want to highlight it because it's a, it a cool view. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not impressed with this view myself. I mean, <laughs> it's. Play flat, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The nacelles just seem too cartoonish, too play school esque. I don't know. Mm. They just seem odd here. Mm. They, need, they need to add a detail on those end caps, I think, is what mm. would help. Um. Mm. Yeah, mm. and there's little cutouts in the engines at the bottom, which I quite like. Feel very pod racery to me. <laughs> um, and if you look, there's actually little slices out of the fins. Maybe that could be Johnny's, you know, one of his first ways of adding slices into pylons, which we see in the Discovery Prize. Hmm. Just noticed. Indeed. Well, now we're back to the first picture. There we go. This was an intrepid look. Boo. An interesting shit. What? We're venturing into unknown territory here. People haven't really had a much of a close look at this thing, except for the models from Eagle Moss. But buy the Eagle Moss models. Code track yards at store. Check yeah, out. if you click the link down below, there's an Eagle Moss link. Check out the store. And if you want to use a discount code, you can use track yards, all one word. That'll get you a discount. So you can buy any of the ships we talk about in the show. At a discount. Thank you, Eagle Moss. Um, but yeah, I like the ship I always have. I would love to see a super high detail version with a bit more uniqueness. And also one thing we haven't mm. mentioned, no registry. Yeah, it's true. Um, I, and that's obviously just a sense of we're not going to waste time registering it. But I mean, if there is literally only 20 ships in the fleet, there's only three of this. It could be one of this. We don't know. This could be the, the Intrepid class. The Intrepid. So why register it? It's like Exactly, yeah. Well, that's the design that looks like this. I mean, what, what do you mean? I mean, this is, And then we change the engines and make a new version with the Warp 3.7 engine. That's the other version. I mean, do we need registries? I mean, the Not in that case, no. Yeah. I mean, the Frank, I mean, the Emmett didn't have one. The you know, none, none of the pre-NX ones do. The cargo ships do. The NX does, but that's 01. And then the Franklin does, but that's a post-Federation repaint. So that doesn't count either. So they might just be pre-registries. Anyway. Yeah. That's an interesting discussion point, actually. But anyway, um, guys, uh, if you want to help us make continue making shows like this and looking at models that are canon but mm -hmm. not seen on screen for very long, and it's really cool to actually do that because there's a lot of detail and thought put into these, and you never see them. So, I mean, if you want to take a look at those, you can help by supporting mm -hmm. us here on Trek Yards. Join the Patreon. Go to the Patreon page. Link in the description below. A dollar a month is mm -hmm. means a world of difference to yeah. us. I mean, it doesn't seem like much, and it wouldn't be much for you, but it's a, it's a huge thing for us. And it's just that regular support on Patreon, because YouTube's kind of eh sometimes. Um, yes. So that would help us out as well. Or head on over to trekyards.com. Click the donate mm -hmm. button. You can send us a, a donation that way as well. And we appreciate anything that you guys can do to help us out, even sharing the video. So there you go. Well, I was about to say the free way is just sharing videos, subscribing to this channel, liking these videos, making sure you click the bell notification when you do subscribe because that doesn't make a difference in the algorithms. 
Um, and just, yeah, being part of the conversation over at Track Yards, uh, the, the, the Facebook page for Track Yards. We've got a group and a page. Look at the page for more information and the group for the discussion. We have dozens of posts a day. Really great community. Yeah. And they talk about ships like this. And it's awesome. It should it sell is. itself, really. It, it does. Go. So go. Check it out. Track Yards, Facebook. Go. Bye-bye. And come back next time for another awesome look at something because we do a lot of stuff. Yes. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>